Hello everyone, welcome back to another Siren Stream. Excited to be back again with Lacey PV. I'm so excited to have her back on. Um, we are back for the second month in a row. It's crazy. I know we had like a six month break there, but we've got two in a row here where we've uh, we talked about carbon last month, did some design system work, and now we're going to be talking about Medusa JS today and do some e-commerce stuff. So I'm really excited about this too. I know this is kind of a topic that's, I don't know, I guess maybe because I'm more front end, it's a little more complex and complicated and something that everyone seems to be interested in, but it's almost a harder thing to get into. And so I'm going to let you maybe just introduce what we're going to be talking about today, Lacey, and just kind of give an overview of where we're going to get started at. Sure. Uh, so Medusa.js, it is e-commerce. It's a backend that's built in Node.js. And I sort of came to it because I have a little coffee roasting business, right? And for a long time, I used uh, Magento or Magento. People pronounce it different ways. I've always been a fan of open source, right? So it was sort of either Magento or Woo or those sort of PHP-based options um, where it's all in one, right? Like you have the front end and the back end together. And, you know, like I, and you would be the front end person that you are, right? That it's like a straight jacket around you. You can't really do any of the stuff that you really want to do. Um, and so there are some newer companies who are working on, you know, separating that, right? Ha, you know, headless commerce. And even Magento and Woo have options, right, to be headless, but it's not what they are by design. So they don't really do it all that well, just because that's not what they were ever really architected to be. Um, but there are, are very few of these newer style, like headless e-commerce solutions that are open source. Right? There's a handful. There's um, Salier is one if, if you're like a Python based person, uh, Vendor is up and coming, and then there's Medusa. And Medusa was just sort of the right thing at the right time for me. So that's what I really focused on. Um, and, you know, being a Svelte kit person, it's great because you can build your app, your front end app exactly the way you want it. And all of the heavy lifting is coordinated by Medusa in the background. Right. So, and I know that you've talked about wanting to set up a Medusa store, right? I think for your mom in the past, right? And getting a little bit discouraged. And we see that a lot in the Discord for Medusa. It can be very intimidating for people who are new to it. I mean, that's probably always gonna be the case for a, a project that's as powerful, right? Can do as much. There's always gonna be a little bit of that intimidation factor because it's, it's like Nginx, right? It can do so much that it can be overwhelming. Like when you first, you know, jump into it. Although there's a lot of work that's being done to make it less intimidating and provide some guided on ramps, right? To help people with that. So for the purpose of this intro, I think you know what we decided to do was have a server that's set up that you're already logged into that is already has the related and supporting Medusa services. Because what Medusa does is, um, and it's just like Woo or Magento or anything else where they have a separate database that they rely on, right? In the case of Medusa, it's Postgres. And Medusa also has an event management system, you know, built in, it uses Redis for that, you know, for, for really good performance. And you can also set up search for your products and categories that goes through Medusa. And so you have different options you can select for that, like Melee Search or, or um, uh, Algolia. So what we decided to do is give you an instance, right, that already has all those related services, because otherwise this wouldn't really be a spell kit talk, right? It would be yeah. purely a a sysadmin talk, and um, and then to just start from creating the the Medusa project, uh, which we'll jump into in a bit. But just one more thing to say about that is the Medusa team is um, working on making it more edge friendly, right? So you know, some people wanted to, like I'm old school. I would just as soon have my server set up that I install all these related services and I can architect it the way I want and that's fine. But you know, more and more people want to go serverless and not manage any of that. And they want their Postgres to be through Superbase and their Redis is hosted somewhere else. And you know, they use the hosted option for, for Melee Search or Algolia. 
and they want Medusa to orchestrate all of that, but just be a serverless module. And, and Medusa, the team is actually building that right now. They've done the product module, they're working on the cart module. And so that's coming soon. But as of right now, it really is, um, it's basically an, an express service that, and, and container service, right? That takes all of these microservices and makes them available to you via REST endpoints. So we're gonna set up the Medusa backend first, um, and then we're gonna show how to, you know, use a little Svelte kit starter, which is just a bare bones to, to get started customizing and interacting with that. Okay. Perfect. So we just kind of have a little head start going. And you were mentioning, I had tried to st start a little store for my mom and she ended up setting up a Facebook shop because that was like a little simpler. And it's, it's these things like when we're, when you're more front and centric, like setting up a server is something that I'm not really good at. It's like not in my wheelhouse. So it's like, it's a little complicated. So I, I kind of get why the team is like leaning more into that serverless edge technology because it's, that is a little more in my wheelhouse. Like I feel like I could maybe lean into that because those hosted platforms allow that a little easier. But yeah, I, I also get that I could have to learn it if I took like, the time. For me, I get really nervous, and I know for regulatory reasons, other people in other areas are probably nervous, like having any customer data in different places. Right? Yeah. For me, I love knowing where everything is and that it's contained. Right. And I yeah. like it not be I like the related services not being accessible to the world and only accessible to that app. Um, yeah, that's just me. And I know that that's the countercurrent for where things are going, you know, more and more things are going. I, I love serverless. Don't get me wrong. I think there's definitely like anything is documentation heavy, things like that. Like I love serverless. I'm not fully convinced that it's the right tool for for everything, but it's great to give people options. Right. Yeah. And for e-commerce, I get like, that's something that I think historically, especially has been a server full platform. Mm -hmm. So yep. I, I get that. All right. Are we ready to get started with our screen share? I think I'm ready. Are you ready? We're going to okay. do this in a very realistic way. <laughs> we're going awesome. to muddle through it, mistakes and all. So, you know, and, and yeah, get, get ready along, for the mistakes. <laughs> We'll try to go through, you know, every single step and not skip Perfect. anything. You know. Get ready for the live stream, live coding uh, stuff. So I just had the medusajs.com site pulled up here, but I will pull that off screen and just have my VS Code terminal opened here. Um, so I'm going to let you lead the way and just you tell me what I need to do and I'll follow along. Sure. So for the in the interest of not skipping anything, we're going to go ahead and type out a command, but not run it because it's already installed. So the first thing that you would want to do is install the Medusa CLI tool. Okay. And so you do sudo npm i dash g. Yep. And then at Medusa JS slash uh, Medusa dash CLI. Right. Like that? We're not actually going to run that, but that's the command that you would want to run first. And it's going to install what you would need to run for the next command we're going to do. So the next command we're going to do. Put that over there for everyone. If you want to copy that for your terminal. Okay. Is uh, to actually use that. We don't need sudo from here on out. We can just do NPX. Okay. Just do npx medusa. That's the CLI we just installed. And then do a uh, new for a new backend project. And then whatever we want to name it. Let's just call it demo if you want. Whatever you want to name your folder. Okay. And then okay. go ahead and press enter. Looks like that's going to get initialized and start running. Yeah, it's going to go ahead and install all the packages. And then next, it's going to ask us for our database user and password, okay. which I'll give you. This is just a throwaway instance that we're going to destroy right after this. So it's just Postgres as the user, and the password is bad password. <laughs> We, uh, we went through like setting up all this before and we were <laughs> trying to figure out how we were going to do this. And it's just like, we're just going to do a throwaway because it's just easier. 
That way we don't have to worry about hiding stuff or I'm so bad at all this DevOps stuff too. I'm like, just just make it easy for me. <laughs> yeah. Of course, NPM is gonna take like a minute to install everything. So <laughs> yeah, it's gonna download and install it all. Yeah. And for anyone curious, this is a, a T3 large instance. You could probably get away with a medium. Um, if this, this is on AWS, um, it, you can go a lot of different ways company. with how you architect Medusa because it can scale from very small shops to very, very large. But until you do get really, really large, it's really economical just to put everything on a single EC2 instance. You can make an AMI backup of the whole thing and be up and running with copies like super easy. You can easily back it up to different regions um if you do it that way so it's just a nice simple way um what's what's the difference between like a medium and a large size wise i i don't remember offhand i think a medium is like two cores and a large you go up to four i might i probably have that wrong there's a memory difference as well they usually double memory each um leg up i don't know i just sort of picked it at random um are these credentials? Do I just continue here? Uh, so you want to change credentials? Okay. It's 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 picking up your user credentials. I think is what it's doing by default there, which is kind of handy. But okay, so change credentials and then yeah, what we're, the DB user is Postgres P O S T G R E S, and then and the password is bad password, just lowercase all together. P A S S W O R D. And then and the port is default. You can just press enter. Okay. Yep. And, and enter. Board. Yeah. All yeah, right. it's not open to the public. And um, uh, do you have any information on like what pricing might be for those instances? I th I th maybe around, if you have a reserved instance, I think it's around $20 a month for a large and around $40 a month for a, a extra large. It's okay. based on memory. Yeah. I'm like wondering because I know like Shopify is like a big name in this industry too. And like you can pay Shopify to do a lot of this stuff for you too. And they host all this. Right. But mm -hmm. it's, I think starts at 50 a month. I honestly I have no idea. I didn't really I look. Too I think Shopify is a great option for certain people. It's just, yeah. if, if you're the kind of person who wants to build your storefront and svelte kit, it's probably not the best solution. Yeah. Because I want to say, I looked into it for a client, and I want to say if, if to use Shopify in a headless way, you have to get a different plan that's like way more than, I, I don't even remember what it is, but it's it's not for small businesses. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's more of an enterprise thing because it's just not really intended to be used in a headless way by mom and pop shops. It doesn't really account for the tech geeks out here who's like, yeah, it might not make sense to build my own storefront, but I want to build my own storefront. Like that's the whole point. Yeah. Completely. Um, yeah. Just a note, okay, cause in, in the Medusa discord, like you see all the questions. And so you know what some of the things are that trip people up, make sure mm -hmm. that whatever DB user you use here is a user that has permissions to create it's so, cause it's going to need to run the migrations, right. To set up your, your database. Down, if you want to limit it, which is great from a security standpoint, because a lot of people want to set up a user that's specific to the application, it has very limited permissions, that's great. But you'll want to change those settings after you get everything set up. Don't don't set up that limited user first and try to use it here. You'll run into trouble. That's a great point. Like the roles and permissions in databases is something I always run into. Mm -hmm. So now we have our backend project folder set up. You could go ahead and CD into that folder and maybe open it up just so people can start to see what that project folder looks like. I think that should work. Oh, do I have to enter the password for the SSH thing again? Is that what it's asking me for? Uh, I think so, yeah. But you can also go back to the other window, and uh, but this is fine too, and, and okay. open it up on the side. I um, did the code dot dash yeah, R to open cool. it's all, in it's the same cool. window. And um, I have habits, and sometimes the habits are bad. <laughs> it's, it's, 
when I'm doing new it, things. It works, so, okay, so now we is. have our folder open that we just set up. Yeah. So it's useful just talking a little bit about what this is. So in that source folder, that's not the the whole source for Medusa, right? That's separate in your node uh, modules. But what you can do here is basically override any piece of the Medusa functionality. Almost every piece is exposed to you to be able to customize. And so any custom code that you want to write, if you want to have custom loaders, custom API routes, custom database migrations, custom data models, services, um, which I, I use quite a bit, right? If you want to add some extra piece of functionality, like I integrated Cognito as the credentials provider, instead of storing it directly in the database, you could do that. Now it's a separate plugin. But before I made it a separate plugin, I just created a separate service there. Any service that you want. It's like, this is why I love Medusa is... You may or may not want to customize your back in, the, in this way, but you know that you always have that flexibility to customize it almost endlessly, right? Subscribers are really handy too, because you can set those to run on certain events. So if you want to send uh, like custom drip campaigns, things like that, if you want to send a certain email, if someone makes an order, a certain email for it, like you can set up I, I mean, really, like your imagination is the only limit to what you want to do with this kind of platform. This is really nice that each one has a README too. So it like explains mm -hmm. what each directory does. It's a really nice touch. Mm -hmm. And some examples. And the, the website too is, is really, really good. They have one person in particular on their team who focuses exclusively on the documentation and like if you follow their GitHub and you get those notifications, she's just con it's just constant, right? She's constantly updating. That's partly because the pace of change with the project is so fast, yeah. right? You have to keep it up to date. But also just as people ask questions over and over, they they see that and they add more and more to the how to's um, in the official. Like a lot of people will skip over the official documentation because they'll assume that it's just it's bare bones, um, but it's really not. There's a lot of stuff in there. That's great. So the next thing that we are going to do here is um, we're going to go to our Medusa config and um, just make a few changes from the default. We're going to okay. uncomment some stuff. Um, so Redis by default is what it wants to use for the event manager. And if it doesn't have that, it'll do some sort of fake Redis. But uh, it runs out of memory really, really quickly with the fake Redis. This is a server that already we already installed Redis. Um, if, if, if for anyone who wants help with that sort of stuff, if you go to pv.com, um, p e v e y dot com, the very first link is sort of it's just a very boring step by step <laughs> instructions on how to set up a lot of these related services: Postgres, Redis, Melee Search, etc. But so we already have it set up here. So we're going to scroll down to some of the places where it's commented out, uh, like right here where it says const modules. And it has both of those places commented out, event bus and cache service. We're going to uncomment that. Well, that for some work. reason, VS Code doesn't want to uncomment it automatically. Interesting. <laughs> I noticed earlier. Uh, and then also just slightly down from that where it says project config. And it I has think because a, it uses the like bulk yeah. comment rather than the just double slash. You would slash. think it would know how to deal with those, right? Yeah. It's very <laughs> odd. Uh, so where it says uncomment the following lines to enable Redis in that project config block. Yeah, go ahead and uncomment that one too. Okay, great. So this makes sure that it uses Redis. But let's also do one more thing while we're in here. And that is... Um, Medusa comes with a default admin dashboard that you can use. Uh, you, if you don't want the admin dashboard, you can use it just as completely headless. And you might want to do that in some production scenarios. I don't know. It's an option. Um, but here we're going to go, or you might want to build your own custom admin, which some people have done. Like, um, But we're going to use the default. So if we scroll up, there's a place under plugins where yeah so it says to enable admin plugin uncomment this okay so we need to uncomment that let's see if that one works because it was the yeah. double lines it's so weird yeah 
So let's go ahead and save that and then open up a, a terminal again. Okay. And just make sure from here that everything is running. So you, the okay. command you would use is yarn dev. Oh, we're switching from NPM to yarn. It's going to throw me off. Yeah. <laughs> did it do a yarn install when we did the NPM? I have no NPM? idea. But the thing is, and this so is another little tip I'll give to I. There's this no is probably anymore. just something in my setup. I have trouble installing the Medusa CLI and using it with Yarn. I don't know why. And then in the project itself, I sometimes run into trouble using NPM. I don't know why. That's beyond me. I've never spent time really trying to troubleshoot it. I think with NPX, because it like runs whatever that command is without actually installing it, it probably detects that it's using Yarn in the package manager, and then it installs the node modules as a part of all that. So it just it auto detects it and it installs them as a part of like the command. Not much of what you just said makes sense to me, but I'm going to take <laughs> your word for it. Sounds good. Sounds good. Over time, I just figured out what works for me pretty consistently. And so that's what I, I think that's how a lot of like programming in general works. It's like, does this work? Yes. Let's keep doing that. Yep. Keep doing that. And there is actually on that point, I should, just a note, and I don't use it myself, but if for people who go to the documentation and read, they'll probably see this. There is another way to, to start a new Medusa project, and it's a relatively recent addition that the team made, and that's uh, Create Medusa App, I think is the name of it. So you can like NPX create or NPM create Medusa app. I don't know exactly. Like read If you go to the how to get started, it'll walk you through that. Um, I myself don't tend to do that because it, what it also installs the store, the default storefront starter, which is a Next.js app, which which is just not for me. So yeah. that's the reason I don't go that route. But it's an option for anyone who's watching. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you know, that is very strange, actually, because it is package lock, so it would be using npm. So I I don't know how it detected yarn there because it would have a yarn lock file if it was yarn. So don't mind anything I just said. I have, I have no idea. So it probably it was just NPM who installed all the packages. It created the package lock. And now if we did yarn install, it would create our yarn lock. It would get a yarn lock file. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so here, just so people see, when we, when we created it, when we started it via the terminal, it's giving us a few warnings because Medusa is building blocks. Right. And, and it gives you a lot of choice. It doesn't force you to use any particular thing. So it's saying you don't have a notification provider installed. So that would be like SendGrid is probably the most popular one. You can use Postmark, Resend. I use SES, AWS. It's easiest for me because it used to be it was essentially free because you had something like 60,000 free emails a month. But that's going away soon. But it's still by far the cheapest option. Um, Resend is a really nice one because you can use React uh, email templates. But um, it's similar with tax providers and the search engine. We have the search engine itself installed on this machine. But to actually use it in our project, we would need to install the Medusa, you know, Melee Search plugin and just set up the configuration options so that it can connect with the, the search provider on this machine. For our purposes, I don't think we want to go through that. We know that everything is up and running. So what I would do here is just control C out of that. So you can okay. know that so it's good. We yeah. don't need this 9,000 port server. We can just. Um, well, we could do one more thing while we're here, actually. And um, that's go ahead and set up our port forwarding so that you're able to access it just fine. OK. Um, so if you go up to the terminal where it says terminal problems output dot dot dot. Mm -hmm. If you click on the dot dot dot, the next option should be like ports. Yeah. So click on ports. Oh, and okay. forward a port. And we're going to forward 9000. This is crazy. I've never seen this. V does it for you automatically. So you don't really need it that much because it'll just say like it's already forwarded it for you and you just click on it's 5173. You're good. This does the same thing if you have a project that doesn't do it automatically. Oh, OK. No. So if you press, if you do enter, it should default to localhost. Yeah. yeah. So now if you click on localhost, it'll tell you something like can't get, but that's fine. Like I would go ahead and click yeah. control click. You control click on it. Yeah, I did. It just opened it in a, a window. Oh, uh, got you. That you're not sharing. 
So it well, probably yeah. says something like cannot get, right? Because that first top level directory, it's it's not a route. The way that Medusa works is it has two sets of API routes, and one of them is under the store directory, and one of them is under the admin directory, right? So if you just go to the top one, it'll do that. But if you went to say like slash store slash products in your browser, oh, like after the nine thousand, if you did slash store slash products, I think this is right from memory. Yeah. 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 So it's that we haven't we haven't seeded the database with anything. So it's telling yeah. us exactly what we expect. We got nothing in there. And now if you go to instead of slash store products, if you went to slash app, which I think is the default for where it serves the admin app. Yeah. It should, this is where we would log into the admin, yeah. which we can't do right now because our database is empty. It's just the structure. We have no users set up in the admin. So that's what we're going to do next. Now we okay. can control C. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right, go ahead and leave your port just how it is. And so it'll keep forwarding. Okay. And sometimes I have to press control C uh, twice. It, it said gracefully stopping the server. So it did stop the server. Yeah. But now does it give you gibberish when you type? Try typing something. Nope. Nope. That's okay. just my gibberish. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, so the next thing we want to do is is we're going to seed it with some default. If I, like on, on the far right in your data structure, your folder structure, if you uh -huh. go to that data directory, in the very far right in your folders, yeah, yeah you see the seed JSON. So what we're basically that's a it, it gives you that as the project. If you're not going to use it, you can just delete it. But here we're going to use it to go ahead and set up our our database um, using the Medusa CLI. So if we do NPX Medusa and then seed dash F dash F, um, it's a space. So it's a command flag. So seed space oh, okay. dash yep. F. Yeah. And then space and then the name of the file, which is data. Does it need a path in slash uh, seed dot JSON? Because so we're already in that folder, so it, it, that should work. Yeah, let's give that a shot. So this is just kind of initializing the database with some data up front that they've provided in like a JSON blob, basically. Exactly. Just to um, give us some starter products. Exactly. And if you're not going to use the seed, um, which I typically don't ever use the seed, um, and you're using a brand new da database, you'll still want to run uh, the migrations. Um, and to do that, you would just do NPX Medusa migrations run. All of that is, is in the getting started guide as well. But just as a note to people, if you don't want to use the seed file, you still need to do some, some configuration of your database uh, to make sure that everything is set up properly. And a lot of times it'll just tell you there's no migrations to run and that's fine. But anytime you start a new project or update to a new version of Medusa, you generally want to do that to make sure that there's, um, and sometimes when you install a plugin, it has migrations that you need to run. So it's, it's a good idea to do that. Uh, so we are seated okay. and, the oh, there's one more thing that we want to do in the config. So if okay. you open up that Medusa config file that we were in earlier, um, there's a place where it says admin cores and store cores. There we go. It's like the middle of that screen, right? So we're going to do a couple of things. This first one, I'm not sure is necessary, but on admin cores, after that, uh, localhost 7001 at this the one? end, right before the closing, uh, quotes, do a comma and then HTTP colon forward slash uh, localhost colon 9,000. Okay. I don't think this is necessary really since the, the app itself is being served on 9,000. It's not really cross origin, but I always put it just in case. The second yeah. one we definitely need under store cores, we want to do a comma and we're going to add HTTP uh, localhost 
5173 for our spell kit app. Right. Because by default, it's set up for 8,000, a, a storefront app at 8,000. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can, e you can either change the, the port your Spelt Kit app is using by default, which I, or you can just add it here, which is the route I prefer. Yeah. So now you can like save that one again. Yep. It's and all saved. I'm looking at my checklist to make sure I haven't forgot anything. I said in the Medusa Discord the other day, it's like, I'm going to, get a t-shirt that says, check your admin cores. Cause we get that question so often. Um, Just have like a, a printout, like taped to your wall next to your computer. <laughs> check your admin cores. Um, there was that like uh, West Boss made like that flex box and CSS grid like poster a while back. And like people were buying those things up left and right because it was like such a nice way to look at it and learn CSS grid and flex. I didn't see that, but I need that for sure. Every time I'm doing that, I have to go to the Tailwind documentation and look at the images <laughs> to remind yeah. myself. Well, um, Tailwind does it so different too. Oh, do they? I don't want to know anything. Like that's the only way I know how to do it. I don't want to confuse myself. You're a front end person. Like you understand this stuff. Me, I just understand what works. And I have, I, okay. I, I, have, I copy and paste what works. Yeah. Um, so I think now I, we've made all the customizations that we're going to make for our purposes to the back end. We have it seated. We have everything configured. So we can get it running and then open up a new terminal and focus on our, our storefront app. We just want this running in a different terminal in the background. OK, um, so the, the server does need to be running. Yeah, so you'll just want to do Yarn Dev one more time. Make sure everything's working with the new settings. Okay. And then we'll just leave that running on port 9000. Cool. The first time you enable admin, by the way, it will take quite a while. I think we already did that once, but it will take quite a while because it will build it. Info processing. Okay. Yeah. Great. So it's up and running. This is just the normal um, output that it does to the console every time it does something and it's processing things from the migrations that we just ran. Okay. I was just seeing if the server was actually like served yet, but it doesn't say that it's up yet. It, it, it does though. It, it should, if you scroll up before it starts doing all the infos, yep. Server's ready on port 9,000 it says. So we are good. It, it says that somewhere. I'm just blind then. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're good. Right before. Uh, yeah, it does. It does it right there. Right there. I just, right there. Right there. Right there. I'm yeah. blind. I didn't see it. <laughs> okay. okay. So um, you we can if you want to. I think the easiest way is to uh, where that terminal was. Wait, where did that terminal uh -huh. go? Yeah, just do the plus. I, just, I I I'm, I have a shortcut. I just put it away when I don't need it. I got you. Well, we're still gonna need it. We just want to keep. So I would do the plus to open up a new one. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and we're just going to leave that running in the background. Um, and I would do like cd dot dot and get um, back to the your home directory. <laughs> and now we create the uh, storefront app. So uh, do you happen to have um, handy that GitHub link to the repo for the starter app? Um, um, I or, have it. I, let me here. post. I think I do. Um, I think it's. I'll post it in the private chat first to make sure that's the right one. Yep. Yep. So okay, to and then I'll it, post it, it for everyone. Be, yeah. Like one you just use that. Talking. And is that, um, do I fork that? Do I need to clone it? No, by, by cloning it, it's your own copy. It's not gonna, Okay. yeah, you're not gonna hurt anything. Okay. Um, so get clone and then paste. And we'll just call this Siren Store. Front. And home CV Siren Storefront. Yep. And I don't want to do the code thing again. So you can just go up to the top would... and file open folder. I uh, never do it. The, anyway. top, the top left, the very top left. And Siren Storefront. Okay. And so that just opens a new window. And it wants. 
Yeah, Passive. we'll have to just double check that the other terminals are still running. Uh, it opened a whole new window. Did it? And they are not. Okay. So I, I have an idea. Though. So I'm going to CD up and I'm going to code dash R in that directory. And then I'll be in the root directory. There you go. And then I'll be able to go back and forth between the two and I'll be able to see both. Um, CD into demo sirens in this terminal and yarn dev there. And oh, well, you can't do that yet. It's going to give you errors because we have it. Uh, we need to rename the EMV file from EMV example to EMV. In, in the oh, demo? No, that that never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Sorry, I was just trying to rerun the server that we were just running, and then I'm going to yep. create a new terminal and go back into, um, actually, I'm already there. So now CD into Siren storefront, and this one will be just for the other directory. So now we're in our spelt kit storefront in this terminal, if that makes sense. Sorry to confuse everyone. This is kind of like working out of a mono repo, which I'm like a little familiar with. So it's a little complicated, but we'll get there. Uh, so we're in the storefront. So in the storefront folder in your browser on the right, you'll want to find the env.example file and just rename it to .env. Okay. In the storefront? Oh, right there. Um, just rename it to .env. Uh, yeah, so that it picks it up as your actual EMV. I think all the defaults will work for us fine. Okay. Uh, back end is fine. This is fine. Yeah, I think all this is fine. Cool. Um, to get started. And yeah, I guess moment of truth. Now let's yarn dev and see if it actually works. It runs yarn on the silk kit app too? Yeah, I use, I, I tend to default to yarn. Okay. With Medusa plugin development, if anyone gets like really into it so and goes that far. I probably need the yarn install in here because there's no no. Oh, models. right, right, right. We forgot the most important part. There's um, no lock file either. Maybe that's not a problem, but. No, I, I default to PMPM. I love PMPM. <laughs> I've tried to use it and I just always seem to run into troubles with it. Maybe eventually. Oh, really? With 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 Medusa, you have to do a lot of linking because it doesn't you it it uh, there's a lot of circular dependency because Medusa JS when you do a plugin it pulls in that but then your plugin itself has as a dependency certain like utils and things from Medusa JS that you need to pull in and if you can get into a lot of trouble with that, with pulling in duplicate versions of packages. Uh, uh -huh. So you end up doing a lot of yarn link if you're, if you're do if you're uh, developing plugins locally, if you're just installing uh -huh. plugins from NPM, it's not a problem. So for that reason, I default a lot to the yarn. And there we yeah. are. We're up and running. This is the seed yeah. data. These are the products. It's the Medusa swag. That's the seed data that we just installed. If you didn't have seed data, you'd probably be seeing all sorts of errors right now because in the starter app, I haven't done a lot of graceful error handling at this point. Um, so if you don't have any seed data, you probably just, you wouldn't really be able to do much of anything. But once you have seed data, um, you'll be able to click on those. And it has like auth setup, um, a basic checkout if you're using Stripe um, setup. Um, and so, uh, you know, obviously for a front end person like yourself, you're like, this needs a lot of work. Right? <laughs> but from a plumbing standpoint, a lot of it is done for you. Right. Yeah. So that's it, awesome. So that null is because I guess for this, they don't have a description in the, in the seed data. Okay. Right? So maybe so, just an block around that. If there's a description then show it, if not, yeah, th things like that. So like this is really set up for a project that I did. Uh, um, and you can, for like, your that's copy. Actually, yeah, that's actually a cut like copy paste that I forgot to take out that I should take out at some point. Um, <laughs> <Blah, blah. laughs> um, 
but yeah, just as a, like a starter to get people going. Cause I think that's like always the hardest part is like, just how do I, how do I interact with Medusa? How do I get categories, products? How do I do the checkout flow is probably the most complex part. It um, is one of the hardest parts, like getting all those connections and data points like set up correctly and making sure that that flow. And like I said, not being like a, a back end person, setting that up takes that out of me. And then trying to get the spelt kit connections like together is a whole separate issue. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So this is a nice like entryway into all of that. Mm -hmm. um, Medusa does have a few different options to be able to connect. If you're building a storefront app to be able to connect, if you're using React, you probably you'd want to use Medusa React, which is maintained by the official team. It's, it's the obvious way to go. They also have something and it's actually what Medusa React is built on top of. This is called Medusa JS, Medusa dash JS, right? Not to be confused mm -hmm. with the project as yeah. a whole, but it's it's the the front end SDK. Um, but the way that this was built is um, it has as a dependency basically the entire Medusa project and all of its dependencies. So it is, it's it's far from lightweight. This is something that they're changing. The reason that they do this is for typing, right? They include the Medusa, the main Medusa package to get the types from it. And then that package has all of its dependencies. Like the first time I tried to add it to a, a spelt kit app, I was like, what is all the stuff that it's installing? Like, no way. When the yeah. when it's just making API calls. So that's why I built a client library that was specific to Svelte Kit to because it's it's just REST calls. So instead of having to make the REST calls directly, it's just a wrapper around all of that and and a nice little middleware that you can add to your hooks file, your hooks.server.ts, so that it automatically uh -huh. handles Medusa authentication for you. Um, but the Medusa team has gone a different direction that they're working. I mentioned they were going the server modules route. As part of that, they're moving all the types to a separate package. So they've done uh -huh. the products module already. So the product stuff. So if you're using the Svelte Kit Medusa client, you'll notice that any product related functions are typed and you get the nice tool tips and everything else. Um, cart, user, some other things are still not quite typed because to do that, you'd have to, you'd have an unbelievable number of dependencies. Um, but we're, it's, it's getting there. And as they release those additional modules and they put those types into the separate Medusa types package, then um, there would be more and more nice ergonomic typing to work with as well. Oh, I was reading what Kevin said. Had no clue about Svelte Kit Medusa client will use for the Svelte merch store. Awesome. Yep. And please contribute. It still needs work. So if you see an issue, please do contribute. But I mean, for now, it's just a wrapper that's um, based very much on. So I got the idea from Lucia and how they handle the authentication and in, in the hooks, right? And then they 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 stash it in locals. Um, so it 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 basically treats your Medusa was very much made in the sort of Gatsby heyday of pure Jamstack type of, of yeah. static sites, right? So it was very much designed for your Medusa server to be open to the world because the interaction with the Medusa server is happening from the client browser, right? Directly to the Medusa server. So you could have a storefront that was basically a static site because once your client browser opens it, they're interacting directly with the Medusa backend, right? Oh, okay. And that, that's running on a separate server somewhere. Yeah. So you didn't yeah. have. So you can literally host your storefront on Cloudflare pages, right? Yeah. I I don't love that. I mean, it was very popular at the time. So I, I yeah. totally understand why they did it that way. Um, I think it's falling out of favor for a lot of good reasons. And um, I don't love it because it means that your your Medusa server has to be accessible to the world. And I would prefer just to have it be accessible to the storefront app. Um, and so that's the way the Medusa client works is that it's intended yeah. to be put in lib slash server 
and it's to, intended only to run on the server. Uh, can you open up the console in your browser and see what's happening there? Like why it's not, we might have yeah. forgotten this step. That's what I was wondering what uh, auth we were using and I was going to look for that. Invalid input for parameter site key. Do we need to put a site point. key? Got, boom. Um, Hang on, let me see if we can, in, I hate that it keeps Maybe just go up. to the env file and put something. Uh, oh, I know what it is. This is trying to use an actual. Um, style site key, is it this one? Yeah, yeah. That's the env file. So yeah. is it the actual environment variable that's doing that? Yeah, I guess in order to do auth and check out, because it's configured to use um, turnstile, we would either need to go and disable turnstile, which we can do, I can show you how to do, or um, you, need, you need to actually get a turnstile site key and put Yeah, um, you need your actual yeah. site key and not the, because this is the example. Yeah, so you need your actual, it's free, by the way, for anyone interested. and. The reason I do that is because I use SvelteKit Superform for the for the auth component, which I oh. love and I highly recommend. It's great. Um, and, and, and SvelteKit itself, like they're so fast in, like you could brute force it so easily. I mean, you could just, like it's ridiculous how easy you could brute force any password if you don't have some sort of rate limiting and um, authentication on that. So I highly recommend two different ways you could go either disable the turnstile or recaptcha if you want to use that instead um or just go to cloudflare and sign up you can really easily get the site key um because i i mean i i really think you you need it like it's it's too fast in the old days when it was like you log in and it's a spinning circle for a while <laughs> it's harder to brute force but when it's basically instant um yeah, you really need some kind of protection there. So it's just spell kit turn style is like the package. I'm just trying to see like what's going on under the hood here. Yeah, and this is based on, so Ghost Dev, which I know you know, um, I, I don't know her actual name, but- Willow. She, Willow, yeah. So she created a turn style, the, the first that I know of that was specifically oh, for spell awesome. kit and dealt with the on mount issues and whatever. Um, and so, uh, but she did, I don't think she made an NPM package out of it. And, uh, also at the time that I started using it, um, like you weren't able to have two different turnstile components on the same page, like loaded at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. so this is just a package that I put up there to make it easy to install from NPM. Um, but it's very much based on her work, just to be clear. <laughs> is it turnstile JS or is it? I don't think it's turnstile music. I'm getting like hardcore rock. <laughs> <laughs> I would do like turnstile Cloudflare. What are you looking for? I'm, I'm just looking for the website so I can. Oh yeah, there you go. And I was getting like rock music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not what I'm looking for. Thank you, Google. Yep. Here we go. If you okay. if you sign up for Cloudflare, um, it's one of the options on the left-hand side of your dashboard. So you okay. just, the link you would go to is, uh, so right, it's it's the second section. So on, the, on your dashboard, you'll have websites, blah, 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 domains, and then right under that, turnstile. And then you can just add a site, it's totally free. Oh, you mean after you get in and, so it's not like this docs page, it's the actual like, once you sign up for Cloudflare in your exactly. dashboard. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yep. Um, this might I, be a bit link too. My customers on the site where I'm currently using it uh, skew on, on the, the older side, not, you know, and not very technology loving and friendly. And when I used reCAPTCHA, when I had the Magento site, it was integrated well with reCAPTCHA. And I had more issues with it. Like I had to set it to where it was basically useless and it would let anyone through because otherwise occasionally it would catch real users and they didn't know how to deal with it. And I found that especially anyone who wasn't actually, a, if you didn't have a Google login, if you weren't, if you didn't have any Google cookies, 
if Google didn't know who you were, it just assumed that you were a bot. And these are people <laughs> who have like AOL and Yahoo. These are not people that would necessarily have Google. Oh um, my gosh. And so I find Cloudflare is a much better alternative because they're not relying so much on that. That's a pretty funny metric though. It's like, if Google doesn't know who you are, you do not exist. <laughs> I, I mean, this is, I, I could be wrong. This was my personal experience with it is that the people who always had issue with it were the people who had non Google email addresses. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that is a pain. And I could see how that would be problematic. And I don't know how I feel about recapture. I've never really used Cloudflare for much, um, but I'll have to try out Turnstile. That's nice. Um, I just tried out OctaKit authentication from GitHub. Um, I haven't heard of it. Which, I mean, wouldn't work for like something like this, but I was looking for like documentation site for like the design system I'm working on. So I was trying to look for something that worked well with GitHub. I'm obviously not going to put GitHub authentication on an e-commerce store, but yeah. um, OctaKit was kind of cool. An alternative, because I know sometimes as developers, we don't always have the final say. And, so, you know, a business person might say, absolutely, you're not you are not going to put that turnstile or recapture. It's not going to happen. So an alternative, and, and I hate to be like a, a Cloudflare fangirl, but um, the alternative is to use their their WAF, right, and put rate, limit, rate limiting on the form sum submissions. Um, okay. So there's no turnstile or recapture. It's not perfect, but at least um, it's some protection. I mean, the problem is if, I mean, any any scammer or hacker who knows kind of what they're doing, which is not all of them, but it, you know, they could they're going to rotate through different APs, and it's going to be really easy to counteract. So it that. came up and it asked me if I wanted to install the Svelte for VS Code extension on this server, and I said no because it's your server, and I didn't want to do that. But now we have no syntax highlight oh no <laughs> in the yeah. cell file so i apologize it's like the old caveman yeah, it's like old school. Yeah. but uh yeah i was just gonna take a look and see like this is the server file so this is where um turnstile is getting set up on the server and being loaded in um you've got your form actions and then this is where the page is actually being mm -hmm. So the very first if statement, it basically says, if you get down to the actual template, it'll say, if there's no token, which the token gets filled by um, the turnstile callback. So if there's no token generated yet, it just waits for that token. It won't do anything else. Awesome. Right. So that's why it wasn't doing anything is because yeah, it couldn't load awesome. turnstile because it didn't have a site key. But it also couldn't do anything else because it had no token loaded. And that's there because you don't want them, to, if, if they're super fast, you don't want them to be able to hit submit before there's a token. Because the next thing you're going to do in the form action is validate that it's a good token. Um, so for your speed yeah. demons, that just helps to make sure that, you know, they're not getting errors because the token just hasn't been loaded yet. Yeah. And then you've got... This is a reset form with progressive enhancement with the reset enhance action. Just looking to see if there was another form in here. Is there like a password form somewhere? Yeah, so it's it's all all the auth related stuff is in that one component. Um, Account, register. There's the register form. So that would go to the register action. There's register. Just kind of trying to show everyone how all this kind of goes together, like the back server side to the front end side. Super forms is, is so nice because it gives you nice validation client side and server side without a lot of boilerplate repetitive stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so if you if you in your folder browser open up that lib for uh, directory mm -hmm. um, on the right hand side, uh, the what did I name it? Are we in the right so storefront?
Are you? You've got your components list, and then you've got your server with Medusa and Stripe. Yeah, but I think you're actually, I think you might have opened um, a different folder than, yeah, because see, you're in the LA Roasting Co. folder. Oh. Oh. Oh, you're, yeah, you're in the tests, LA No, <laughs> I was in your other folder. Sorry, I always just scroll down to the bottom. Components. Um, you're right. Is What's your top level folder that you're in? Now I'm in the Siren storefront. Okay, folder. yeah, now you're in the right one. So in that lib folder, there should be, I think I called it validators.ts uh, under the not server. Yeah, validators, the very last one. Yeah, right there. So that's where I put all the stuff that um, Superforms uses. Oh, okay. Um, Right now, I've only used Superforms for the auth component, kind of intentionally, because the other forms show how to do it the Svelte Kit way. And then the auth component shows how to do it the Superforms way. Um, and you can kind of choose which. Oh, way I see. To go about I was it. looking, uh, I was just looking at your other code. I'm sorry. I, uh, because we've got that big list of directories um i was in the wrong directory yeah that's fine it's totally i mean there's nothing super secret there it's no worries <laughs> uh, okay so uh there's the register action i actually left those folders in there stashed away in case we ran into some issue and needed some examples to go by <laughs> yeah yeah um, um register form there's lots of register here there it's it so weird seeing it without the syntax highlighting I think another useful thing to show, we have like, what, two minutes left, is the yeah. hooks file. Okay. Because there's a couple of things that I think are worth seeing there. The One is, is um, yes. you know, I, I wanted to have like some default security related stuff to go by. And so this shows a couple of things. One is this is where that first line where it says await Medusa handle request that's using that middleware that's in that Medusa client library. And what that's doing is on every request, it's gonna to check to see, is this person logged in? Do they have a session cookie? And then they're gonna check Medusa and say, is it valid? If not, they're gonna unset it and handle all of that. All that's handled for you there by attaching this to your hooks file. Okay. Um, so that's an important piece of it. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is kind of the default headers that are shown down there the response header, those are all security related headers. Depending on how you have it deployed, you might have to comment some of these out or change these. Um, if that you was have something- That another question I had is how are you deploying this? Are you on that same instance on AWS? So a server, node server? Yeah, there are two ways that you could go about it. I, I'm currently using a Cloudflare tunnel but I also, okay. if you go to that pv.com tutorial type walkthrough, it shows two different ways, putting it behind uh, Nginx or putting it behind Cloudflare. Um, it's a node app, right? The storefront and the back end. So you need some sort of reverse proxy and there just are tons of choices. There are people who use uh, PM2 to run the back end. I'm not really familiar with PM2, so I can't answer any questions about that. Um, some people deploy using Coolify. Uh, it's, it's one that I keep meaning to look into more. There are a lot of people who in the Medusa community that just really swear by Coolify and love it. Um, me, I like tend to use... Go ahead. Is that like Render? I don't know what Render is. <laughs> Render is like a server. Um, I think they're similar to Heroku. Yeah, I think they are. They're like a self-hosted... Alternative. Mm. Yeah. That's exactly what they are. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I, I I just tend to go the simple old school route. Maybe one day I'll set up some sort of yeah. more, something more fancy, but um, I, I like having my AWS instance completely firewalled and the only opening is, is the Cloudflare tunnel. Um, yeah. And then that way, for your admin and everything else, your Stripe hooks, 
you can configure with Cloudflare access, who gets access to that based on whatever rules you want. Um, to me, I find that the easiest. And I think a lot of people in the Medusa community are sort of moving toward that approach, like away from having the Medusa backend open to the world, which is fine, it works, but security is all about layers, right? So you, if you can add some more layers to that, I, you know, you're better off. I agree. And I like that you're privacy and security focused. So that's, that's nice that you've got all that stuff in one place and secured down. I'm going to share the link to your site one more time. It's just pv.com. Is there the blog like right on the homepage? Yeah. And it's, it's not fancy. So don't, uh, you know, no, maybe, no. You, maybe you give me some design. Yeah. But and it's basically I'm a, a list of documentations, tidbits. Yeah. Okay. And then if, so um, if you're following along with the tutorial and you, you said you have two ways that you can set it up. So if you're going either the Cloudflare or the Nginx way, you're going to use this adapter node for SvelteKit and you're going to build your app as a node app. And then these headers that you have in the hooks.server file are going to be okay for that. Yes, that that's the way that I do it personally. Um, I haven't done it this way. What I'm quite sure would work is um, hosting and the back end this is the, the same starter. way as in the tutorial, but hosting your front end through Vercel using the Vercel adapter should work fly, fine. Cloudflare is not going to work. Um, there's just too much that's not compatible um, mm -hmm. with that. Um, but I, you know, a lot of any, a lot of the other adapters I think would work fine. Vercel, like, for, um, if I would have, if I wanted have to get, edge, right, you'd have to have a serverless because they're not a server platform. Yeah, but your front end is so it's two different applications, really. Yeah. So yeah, if you yeah. want to post it statically, I guess on Vercel or Netlify, then you could and run your server somewhere else. Yeah, but even with um, so it's not fully static. Right? Yeah, you couldn't run, for example, you probably couldn't run these headers in your spell kit application if you did it that way. Like you would be able to do it to for cell, I think. I haven't tested it, but I think it would probably all work fine. You'd have to set up your environment variables a different way and, and some things like that. But I think that it would probably work fine. I, I don't think it would work well with Cloudflare because there are just some things that wouldn't work like um like even something as simple as deer name, right? It's not going to work with cloud. Yeah. Um, and, and it might be, it might need to be adapted slightly even with Vercel, but the vast majority of it, I think is going to work fine with Vercel. I've tested the Medusa serverless modules on the back end, and they work fine with Vercel as well. Um, but for now, I, it's cheapest for me just to put everything on one EC2 instance. Like there's no reason and also to pay Vercel if I already have this instance sitting there. And if I did it that way, I would have to be able to configure my app to talk to my backend that's sitting on AWS. Mm -hmm. And then that's just another exposure point that I don't really want or need where it yeah. can just instead talk via local host. Yeah. But I can see for teams that are that have more of a need for the development experience of Vercel and the built-in, like all the pipeline features, right? It's totally possible to separate your app and, and have your storefront app hosted on Vercel and your backend hosted somewhere else with yeah. all the related services, the database, et cetera. Uh, also I totally do. possible to use Supabase for the Postgres. A lot of people do that. And then you have like a third point of mm -hmm. entry. Um, mm -hmm. And don't quote me on this, but with the Cloudflare adapter for SvelteKit, I do think that's what the adapters do is they take like that dir name there and they configure it to the platform. So whatever that platform uses, it would transform that. Um, but don't completely quote me on that. I don't know exactly beyond, what it does. Beyond me. And I've never yeah. used Cloudflare, so I don't know how it works for Cloudflare, but that's what those adapters do is they kind of transform the code to the platform. So it might work, might not. Yeah, might or might not. Remains to be seen. The pv.com is actually hosted on Cloudflare pages. It uses um, 
M-D-S-V-E-X. I don't know how that's mm -hmm. pronounced, but yeah, it's just um, <laughs> it's something approximately that. Yeah. And it's great. I, you know, some of those services, I'm just like, I can't believe that some of this stuff is available for free, knock on wood, but yeah. Oh, I love MD Specs. That's a Penguin Pete's app. Yes. Um, yeah. Working on that for a while. Um, I'm actually looking at using that for my documentation site too. So I really like MD Specs here. I will uh, stop sharing. Uh, I don't know if anyone has questions or anything, maybe. I don't know if you have to run, but I can stay on for a couple of minutes and, um, answer any questions if I know the answer to them. But uh, yeah, this was great. This was a great introduction. And I feel like it was, I don't want to say easy and simple because I feel like that belittles it a little bit, but this like made the process like much simpler than it is if you're just getting everything set up on your own. Well, good, good. The documentation can be intimidating because it does handle so many edge cases that it can be hard to it's just intimidating. But do you feel like now you can set up your mom's store? Yes, I do. If I <laughs> can just get it, the server like actually hosted somewhere. But I think if I use something like Render or Coolify or something like that, I would be fine. See, I'm not the old school. I'm the new school. I've got to have the new school. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. I have a few minutes. If anyone does have any questions, I'm happy to try to answer it. Cool, yeah. Um, let us know. We have hello from Philippines. Hello. Thank you, awesome. Alpha. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like this was so well done. I mean, I don't even feel like we needed to get anything integrated, but it's all kind of there for you set up in that starter kit. And that's, I guess that's kind of the point of the starter kits is just to get you up and running as fast as possible. Have all those connections just set up. Well, cool, cool. Well, hopefully as time goes on, um, myself and I'm hoping other people will contribute more to that felt kit project so that there'll be more components to sort of pick and choose from without having to start from scratch uh, building yeah. felt kit storefronts with Medusa. We didn't even talk about it, but you're using Melt UI in there. So that's what the components are built with. So the front end is in Melt UI. Um, do you want to speak at all to Melt? which is made by Thomas, who used to do Radix, right? Mm -hmm. And Hunter, yeah. And, and a, Hunter. a large group of other people as well. I don't I don't really have anything authoritative to say about uh, Melt. I, I'm a big fan of the project and their approach. I think the approach, we talked before about kind of hunting around and trying to find the right UI solution for a Svelte Kit project. And there are a lot of good options out there now I mean, skeleton, flow bite, et cetera. But there wasn't really anything kind of like Radix, right? Where the unstyled, if, if you yeah, really it's just want something. Headless. There's yeah. no styles up front. And so the idea with the starter is that people are going to have all sorts of styles. You don't want the storefronts to look the same. So that was my thinking in choosing Melt is to have something that handles the accessibility part of it for you, because I think that's so important. Um, so that that's handled by default, but it doesn't, you know, hamstring anyone into a certain style. Yeah, I actually like that. I, th I think I agree with storefronts. It's difficult. And that's one thing we were talking about Shopify earlier. That's one thing with Polaris is their design system. And they kind of you don't have to use their design system for Shopify products, but they kind of encourage you to do that. And then you kind of get pigeonholed into that brand and that design. Mm -hmm. And you don't want that really like each shop has its own brand and design and you want to be able to flourish that and have your own style. So having a headless UI makes sense for something like a starter mm -hmm. kit. So I really like that. you. As I, I mean, obviously I've, I've shown my age and like that I'm an old school Linux person, like sysadmin type person. So for a long time, a headless UI, that made no sense to me. I was like, that is just a nonsense term. <laughs> headless UI, like what? Like, like what does that mean? <laughs> that means, yeah, like seriously. Um, but now I sort of, I, I, I get it, right? And it takes care of all those ally errors that you get, which there is still yeah. a few in the starter project that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll address as time goes on. But 
it makes a lot more sense to me now, you know, using these approaches to handle those sorts of issues, adding all the right um, roles and such for you. Yeah. And that's like the big thing for me too, with using something. Um, I'm one engineer on my team building a library of components for 50 engineers and making sure that you have accessibility. That needs to be an entire team of people working on that. And accessibility is difficult, whether you mm -hmm. like are actually involved in like trying to make the accessibility better like you just you have to be in it and it's it's difficult to get right so i i appreciate that they're doing a good job with that and continue to work on it so yeah. well i do not see any questions um we do not have another siren stream scheduled right now if anyone's interested in coming on want to showcase anything that has to do with spelt or spelt kit um welcome to come on i'm Happy to have you back on again. If anybody's interested in seeing more of the back end stuff too, I don't know. We could do it on, I have a, a separate YouTube channel. If anybody wants to see that, we could put it on that channel too. I asked Lacey if Medusa had a, a YouTube channel because I think she should go be their dev rel over there. <laughs> <laughs> they might have a channel. Like I remember when I was setting up Stripe for the first time a long time ago, they had a video hosted somewhere. Uh, but I was telling Brittany, they're very shy for some reason. They're super smart. They're very shy. They, you know, that's but, um, how it usually goes. Like they're really yeah. intelligent. Like people that can develop these things are just not wanting to be in the public eye, which I mean, is probably a good thing sometimes. Like the, the people that we see in the public eye that are also super smart are not the ones that we want to be in the public eye. <laughs> right? well, I, I don't you know, know who I'm um, talking about. I, 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 I'm sure I'm not as uh, connected in that world as you are, so I'm not really sure, but I do encourage them. And I think maybe they will start soon. They're also just super busy right now with, with kind of this massive architectural change that they're working on. So I think it's a natural, and I fall into this trap too sometimes to think, it's like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it after I finish this thing, after I finish this thing. I felt that way with putting the starter up because there's so much still that's left to do. But finally, I, you know, when I keep getting people quite like they're just they want help getting started. I was like, well, this will at least help people get started, even if it's far from being in a finished state. Right. So I think that's a trap that we fall into that they're probably in right now is it's like, well, they're in the middle of this large rewrite. Let's wait till after this and then after that and then after that. And it just never happens. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on and showing us this. And I'm definitely going to be going back and rewatching and trying to figure all this out. Um, maybe I can finally get my mom's store set up for her and she can have her own um, actual store, not just a Facebook shop because more going to Meta. We don't need that. But um, I appreciate it. And like I said, anybody who wants to come on, let me know. Um, DM me. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And we will see you all next time. Thanks so much. Bye.